Yo and hello, it is Friday and I am Mike, baseball collector, and I am here to show you some mail today. And I'm going to do one card kind of this way and show you so that I can tell a funny story with it. And then I'll show you the other rest of the mail where I flip the camera around and show the cards in a much better light. So I got this today in the mail from a fellow YouTuber named Card Cutter. You might know him as Garrett. Card Cutter and Garrett runs a bunch of uh, PSA DNA group submissions to send off. And he's a really, just has an amazing autograph collection. Mainly uh, what I love about his collection is the vintage Hall of Fame football Hall of Famer uh, rookie autographs. And the rest of his stuff's just sick. I mean, he gets some amazing TTMs and everything. Well, the funny part about this card isn't the card, although I had seen him get a bunch of them in the mail back from Tommy Lasorda, and I was like, hey, man, I'd, I'd like one of those. And he said, all right. You know, he kind of him hauled around, and not really, he didn't. But what was funny is I got mail today, and it, I didn't, it didn't have his name on it, on the return envelope, and it was in a PWE. And I'm like... Dude, who is sending me a plain white envelope? I hate it when eBay sellers do that. I'm going to give this guy a piece of my mind, negative feedback, blah, blah, blah. I'm paying $3 for shipping and you send it in a freaking plain white envelope. Really was pissed off and angry. And then I open it up and, I, oh, this is the card Garrett sent me. So I don't care that it, when you're getting a free card, you can't bitch about how it shut. It, and it came just fine. There was nothing wrong with the card. So... It was just funny, my reaction, what I'm thinking about. Man, dang, plain white envelopes, but it ended up being all right. So, thanks, Garrett, for this. I love it. I don't have a whole lot of Tommy Lasorda autographs. I certainly don't have an 87 Tops like this card. So, really grateful that you did that. You didn't have to, but I really appreciate it, brother. And now I'm going to turn the camera around and show you the rest of the stuff that I've gotten. So, I think I'm going to do this. I'm going to go baseball, football, baseball. And this is the first card I want to show that I got in the mail today. It is for my last card, Hall of Famer, uh, PSA, non-existent set registry. This is an 83 Donruss Willie Stargell in a Mint 9. 83 was his last year to have cards. He had an 83 Donruss and an 83 Fleer. Um, just haven't been able to find a Fleer. I actually like the Fleer better. Haven't been able to find one. Would probably pick one up if I saw one cheap enough. Because what sucks about the Donruss cards is if you turn them over, it only has like the last five years of their statistics. So I'd really like to see. Oh, look, even yeah, that's pretty cool at the bottom. Future Hall of Famer. Well, that was pretty good. And it says retired after the 1982 season. Huh. Pretty cool. So uh, I had never read that before on the back of this card. So what I love about this card is the picture. Check out that gut on Willie Stargell. It makes me feel like I could play Major League Baseball because that's what my gut looks like. And if Willie Stargell can still be playing Major League Baseball with a gut like that, why can't I? So there's my first card of the day. The second card is a card I kind of talked about the other day because I got the 1974 Topps Juan Marichal, his regular issue card, but I mentioned that he also had a 1974 Topps traded for his last card. So... If you want to count in his last regular card, it's 74 tops. His last real card is this 74 tops traded that shows him as a member of the Boston Red Sox. And this is in a mint nine, so a really good grade for this card. And the reason why I don't really consider it his last card completely is because on the back, it, meant, it merely has this kind of newspaper headline kind of thing about uh, Marshall moving to the Red Sox. So it really just didn't have the same feel of a last card that has all the statistics like his regular 74 tops. But I do think that having these together and being able to say, hey, look, I've got both of them, not a bad little deal. So there's my first two baseball. Now I'm going to show you a couple of football autographs that I got. And the first one is right here. And it's for kind of my little project of just picking up cheap Hall of Famers when you see them, especially Cowboys, uh, I'm really more interested in the Cowboys than anything, but uh, this is a Randy White, one of the greatest defensive uh, linebackers ever. So there you go. Uh, little 
2000, I guess, Fleer Grade to the game on card autograph. Really cheap, uh, 15 bucks or so for this card. So there's that. And then this next card I'm really excited about. Um, there are, for you football guys, I'm just going to show the card. To me, this guy, this player, is one of the greats of all time. If you're top five football players of all time, do not include this guy, Jim Brown, for sure, or Jerry Rice, Tom Brady, then you're not watching the game, or you don't know the history of the game, because Jim Brown was electric and amazing and uh, just did an amazing job. So this is a 2011 uh, Pinnacle Totally Certified card. It was a redemption. Uh, one of my buddies had this card. I actually bought it from him. It's on card autograph. Uh, it's the gold version. So on the back, and, and I've got it in a perfect fit sleeve. At the top there, you can see it's numbered three of 10. So just, I wanted a Jim Brown autograph. Didn't really think I'd ever get one because they're really expensive. And this one is just awesome. And I literally could just, look at it and see it before I buy it and took advantage of it. So there's a Jim Brown, one of the greatest of all time for sure. And here's the last card I got in the mail. And this is a 2016 uh, Panini Immaculate Legends Relic card of Ted Lyons, who's one of those kind of not well-known Hall of Famers for the Chicago White Sox and maybe Cubs, I guess. Uh, let me see if it says on the back. Let's see. Looks like the White Sox. But it doesn't really say. It just says Chicago. Typical Panini. But why this card is important. It's numbered to 10. This is only the second one of these I've even seen since they came out with the... Since they released this set a few years ago. Or not a few years ago. Last year. And it was the last one that I needed to complete this entire set. I've done a tabletop video on this set where I didn't have this card yet. It was the last one I was waiting on. So I finally found it. I want it for, I want to say $20 around that. Um, no more than 25 for sure. I'm not looking at my eBay right now, but it's one of those cards that I put in a bid of $115 or something like that. I was not going to get outbid and I put that in in like the last minute while I was just watching this auction like a hawk put in this giant, if somebody outbids me on this card, they can have it uh, kind of number and want it for way, way. I love it when you win an auction for a way. I didn't, it's not worth $115. I was just willing to spend it because I needed the freaking card for my set. So there you go. That's the last card I needed to complete the Legends Relic set, which is just an amazing set. If you haven't seen that video, go watch it of mine. There are some just awesome Hall of Fame players that are in that set. So there's my mail. Thanks for watching. Hope everybody has a wonderful weekend and get some great cards in the mail. So keep collecting. Have a good one.